with all the big calls on all the big races. Welcome back to another edition of the Racing Post flagship feature weekend show. What a shout! Brought to you by our sponsors, Bet365. Dave Orton, delighted to be back in the seat on a Friday. A lot of rain out there, people, but we're set to shine again, aren't we? What a weekend of racing ahead. Thank goodness for the Tollworth. We've got a brilliant veterans final as well. Popping to win Canton for some previews and a Stella interview as well. And Stella panel, because Paul Keeley joins us back. How are we feeling, Kills? Yeah, all good, yeah. How was last weekend? Uh, Cheltenham and New Year's? And Yeah, I was very, very impressed with Hermes Allen. I mean, it was hard not to be, wasn't it? He cruised through the race. He went further and further clear on the bridle. Uh, it's a lovely win, wasn't it? But we've seen it before. And that, that's that's the only issue. Is he's now favourite for the Ballymore. Paul Nichols has had four winners of the Cello before this. Three of them went straight to the Ballymore. All of them, including Denman, put in their place by Irish trained horses. <laughs> and that's the worry. Uh, the worry is that Willie Mullins, for instance, will have a dozen horses better than the runner-up at Dubry, uh, which is you wear it well. Uh, and we'll have to wait to see. We won't see Hermes Allen since then. He's going to be. He's going to remain at the forefront of the market, but he may well be displaced by something of William Mullins by the time we get there. Good thing about him is he's been to Cheltenham and he's won easily and he's done it on decent ground. So he doesn't have. He doesn't have that unknown about him like Stage Star and Brave Man's Game. So there's. You know, every hope that he could be the real deal this time, as far as a novice hurdle is concerned. But you know, and I know that, you know, he wasn't bought to be a novice hurdler. Mm. And whatever he does, the old cliche is a bonus. He's going to be some novice chaser next year. It keeps um, it's a remarkable horse because they keep saying, "Oh, he surprised us." Three hundred fifty grand, won a point. You know, and how they, horses, how's that surprising the best you? Horses with Paul Nichols are the ones that surprise you. Remember, Silviniaco Conti win by an absolute mile on his debut. Had no idea it was that, that good then. Like, you know, he didn't show him anything. And it's a good thing that they don't show him anything because, you know, you rather they do it on the track than at home, wouldn't you? You just mentioned one thing in there. Not even Denman managed to do this. So it's like, you know... Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, to be fair, Denman, he had, he, he had problems, apparently, uh, in that season. But it didn't stop him turning into a legend. It didn't stop Brave Man's game from winning a King George. Who was the horse that beat him? I can't remember now. Nicanor. No means. Nicanor. Nicanor, Nicanor. I never thought it was the next coming. Oh, we're going back. All right, Pat, were you impressed at Bet365 with the new Ballymore favourite? Yeah, I was actually. I, before the race, I was thinking, oh, I'm not, I'm not so sold on this horse. But he keeps getting better and better and better. And I think the most telling thing of all, really, was Harry Cobden. Quite a reserved chap, really. Not prone to exaggeration. He was full of praise for this horse afterwards, uh, extolling just how great he is and uh, how impressive he was. You you know, the the shallow used to be called the shallow, didn't it? Because the form never really worked out. So uh, that's the knock on the the performance, really, because we keep saying, oh, yeah, but it never really works out, the shallow form. But if you just judge it as an individual performance, you have to say, yep, I could see him going very, very well at Cheltenham. Oh, there's the line of the show, Pat Cooney. I love it, the shallow grade one. <laughs> but, of course, it wasn't that because there were loads of runners. And he took a lead, didn't he? So, look, all the better. What a Christmas it was for Ditchy as well, 13 King George. We'd always spoken about that. Of course, there was a small matter of Cheltenham on uh, New Year's Day. And the rail keel, I suppose, was the starring show, wasn't it? And Marie's Rock, who won despite pulling her head off for the first two hurdles. Uh, yeah, she was remarkably good. I mean, you have to say, she got an RPO of 158 there. There were several horses not particularly well treated by the weights with all the penalties, but she was one of them and she was the only one uh, who stood up to the plate, basically. And she came in and Dashiell Drasher may be better known as a chaser, but he's mm. got some good hurdles for oh, yeah. his name. And, you know, she was, you know, essentially only getting a pound off him because she, was, she had the six pound penalty. She ran right away from him. Uh, even if Honeysuckle does go to the mayor's rather than the champion hurdle, I think Marie's Rock will win anyway. We have to take it right, won, okay. She won the race as an outsider last year she's clearly improving and yeah I was I was well impressed and she roars up that hill and you're obviously hoping that Hendo wins the battle over the Palins and Midland Park who have got obviously the one eye on the stairs as well well, yeah, but I mean, you know, go for the race you're most likely to win. Well, that's Nikki's mo, isn't it? Uh, so, you know, so I'd imagine. Well, I'd imagine that 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 is what will happen. <coughs> yeah, I was roaring home Dash or Drasher, and he absolutely ran another blinder, didn't he? It was a one-three for the Hendo Yard Pat because first street field is stri- as well. But this was streets apart. She's now a dual grade one winner, who we have to take very seriously. Yes, and uh, she's a, she's a mare on the way up, isn't she? You can't say that necessarily about Honeysuckle. So Marie's Rock is three to one favourite. Second in is Epitant at four with Honeysuckle at four. I mean, they're two big bullets to fire, aren't they? Epitant and Honeysuckle. But if you're looking at horses, one's going north and the other two are either level or going south. Marie's Rock, to me, 
you know, uh, not often we have these UK favourites for these races, anti post, but Marie's Rocket is a worthy favourite for this one for me. Oh, there's a whiff of Cheltenham change in the air, isn't it? <laughs> Marvellous. Had to happen at some time, guys, didn't it? Whether it'll be this season or not, who knows? We count the back from March, of course, with all this great racing at the moment. It's wonderful to have Kills and Pat here to do these reviews. If you liked it, don't forget thumbs up on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, and share. It's that simple here is what we've got coming up for you this weekend. We pop to the Cotswolds and thrilled to say Red Hot Trainer Charlie Longston joins me for a wonderful interview. Really enjoyed that. Filmed a little bit earlier. Do not miss it. He gives us all the lowdown on the stars that you saw over Christmas. Big TV winners and of course Snow Leopard S Fancy for the Veterans Chase this weekend. And then those big race previews. All from Sandown. We'll even pop to Wing Canton before those all important weekend winners. Well, really happy to say uh, we go down to the Cotswold trainer now. It's a debutante here on What A Shout viewers. We go and see Charlie Longston. It's fair to say the Christmas period was kind to the stable. Charlie, welcome along to What A Shout. Thank you for having me. Great to see you. Do you know what? I do, I do interview people who look younger than me, but make me feel much, much older. You're one of them. And I cannot believe it was 2006 where Nicky finally unleashed you onto the world and you took out your licence. I've been in racing, writing for the Racing Post by about three or four years by then. Is it really that long ago? Yeah, it is sadly. Yeah, 2006. So it's, yeah, got it 16 years, 17 years ago nearly. Yeah, I left after five great years of Nicky Henderson's. Um, tried to, to go alone and we've been... Yeah, we are one off 700 winners, apparently. Um, so we are 700 winners down and hopefully a fair few more to come. I like that. Now, viewers, if you've got a spare 10 minutes this weekend, do go and check out Charlie's website. It's really, really helpful. Very helpful to me this morning. That's for sure as we're looking along. But of course, on the, on the Racing Post website, Charlie, the run to form at the moment, it's fair to say you had a good Christmas. But before we look at the runners that have got people excited, and of course a jockey in particular as well, and what might be to come, let's have a look back. We've all got favourites from the Longsden Yard viewers, and we mine in particular, and I guess fitting with this weekend in mind was it his last win Pete the Feet when he took out the veterans handicap it was yeah look oh Pete the Feet was an absolute superstar for us him and Loose Chips we can't forget Loose Chips as well he was quite a quite a character two proper rogues in their lifetime um but that's why they were still going at 14 15 strong um but yeah Pete the Feet was a fantastic day for us um, in this veterans final, which is which is again tomorrow, and he loved Sandown, and he loved those railway fans. He just came alive, and he'd always win at a price, and he'd always wear his heart on his sleeve. Yeah, he always, yeah, exactly, always wore his heart on the sleeve. Um, he sort of seemed to know when they turned out, the, jumped the rail fences and turned down towards the pond fence. He seemed to sort of go into overdrive, um, and I think his last run around there was actually he he fell. And he was tailed off coming over the railway fences as a, as a loose horse, and was in front by the time he turned in. <laughs> he just seemed to seem just to know where the where the water fe the the pond fence was, and then he used to go into overdrive. Um, a great character, still going strong now in the, in the at the horse sanctuary down in Sussex. Oh, that's great to know, isn't it? And again, people love to hear about these, you know, retired horses and loose chips. You're quite right. We mentioned him, another character, and of course, you know, you can do it with the veterans. We'll get to that a little bit later on. But you did, of course, it must have been an interesting year for you. Charlie, in particular, with the sad passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, and you were, of course, had the pleasure of training for her. Fourth Bridge was a right horse, wasn't he? Yeah, look, we were look, it was an unbelievable privilege to have to have a few horses for the for Her Majesty. Um, look, she's a great supporter of our sports, um, you know, and you know, couldn't have hoped for anything more. Um, Fourth Bridge was a great horse for us. He won a list of juvenile hurdle at uh, Musselburgh in his day, and then he won the consolation race at Kempton just before, just after the Cheltenham Festival. So, look, we had a few really good fun days, and it's just great to have the to have to have had those colours in our yard and providing her with a few winners. You know, what a privilege that must have been. It's great to hear from you know, all the racing establishment who, who have had the pleasure of talking to Her Majesty. And again, you know, you look out there on the web, guys. It's all there to see Charlie's story there. Of course, you spent some time with Todd Pletcher as well. I've been expecting some more flat winners by now, Charlie. Yeah, I think we've only had seven flat winners. We haven't had many runners, don't get me wrong. But yeah, Todd Pletcher, I, did, I spent the summer of 2004 with him. Um, up in Saratoga, which he was the most unbelievable man, very smooth Texan. Um, to sum him up, and to sum him up still, you know that's that Saratoga that meeting seven seven week festival. He had thirty six winners and was the leading trainer. The second best trainer had thirteen winners, so he was three times better than anyone else. Approximately, he was some man, bit of a legend, and look, he's still firing out the winners 
top class winners in the, in the States now. And it's fair to say, therefore, you know a fast horse. And I think we might have one in the yard because on Boxing Day, you kicked off the Christmas extravaganza, rare edition, of course. He made it, he didn't manage to win a point, did he, this chap? And he went to no. what's known as being a very, very classy, the Altior has won it, for example, the opening race on Boxing Day, under a double penalty, Sam Twist and Davis, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, look, he was good. He was good that day. Um, the right horse was with him turning into the home straight. The Rubo of, of Nichols is. We were both under double penalties. We were both rated 130. We were probably first and second favourite. So, you know, we, we knew turning in. I actually stood and watched the race next to, uh, to Paul. And um, to be fair to him, he was the first person to, well, obviously the first person to congratulate, after, congratulate me afterwards, saying, you've got a bloody good horse there. Um, but it's the manner in which he pulled clear of him going into the last hurdle, um, which impressed, I think it's impressed quite a few people. Um, you know, I think if we're being, if we are, if we were a Paul Nichols or Nicky Henderson, he'd be a far shorter price for going into the future, future races. But he's, look, he's a privilege to have and he's great fun and it's um, long made, long may the bubble stay intact. Yeah, he's a horse that I'm, I assume will jump a fence in time, obviously graduating from the point sphere and will go up in trip at time. But are we thinking we might have a crack at a certain champion bumper when it comes supreme time? Uh, yeah, that's definitely... Look, only thing, my only question mark at the moment is that a couple of times in that race at Kempton, he was a little bit slower with his jumping. Um, and he's almost technically too good a jumper for hurdles. He's a bit slow and jumps him too, like a, like a fence. And as you say, he's going to be a chaser going forward. But he's clearly got an engine. The way he still pulled clear. Um, yeah, look, we've, he will definitely have a supreme novice hurdle entry. And he'll probably, and I will actually also give him a Valley Moore entry as well, because I think the further he goes... Um, I've got no right to to step him up and trip at the moment, but yeah, we'll give him. We'll probably give him two novice hurdle entries at Cheltenham. All right, having just checked, Charlie, he's twenty five to one for the Supreme. Then it's this perennial thing, isn't it? Do they go up in trip? Do they stay there? We've got a hot pot favourite there, but it's I don't know. You've got you never afraid of one, are you? And that will interest a lot of people because Paul Keeley, Tom Siegel, both put the double penalty on him. They love him. Yeah, look, you can't be scared of one horse. Yes, Vassal Vega. Um, look, he's the obvious horse champion bump winner. And he, look, some people say he wasn't impressive um, over Christmas time. He still won the race pretty comfortably. Um, but yeah, you don't run away from one horse. Time will tell from our end that we've just got to work out which route we take now. We got we might look at the Haydock race in a couple of weeks' time, the Rossington Main that is, or if the ground's very very soft there, we might look at the Sydney Banks, and that will be a step up and trip to two, a sharpish two and a half miles at Huntington. So that will sort of give us a bit of indication then as well. Um, but it's just nice problems to have. It's almost like I was talking to Nicky Henderson, then your old boss, because there are two races that he likes to use. I remember Abu Vader won the Sydney Banks for finishing third behind Altior in that year when Altior won the prep race that Rare Edition had, of course, and the Rossington Main is another one as well. But yeah, you're right, it can get tacky up there. All right, listen, we wish you all the best with him. Very exciting again. Proper grey by horse, and what is he going to do over fences? Just please, God, stay in one piece. Glimpse of Gala was another winner, of course, at Kempton for you, but I want to zoom forward, if you don't mind, because there's something of a trend developing here, Charlie. Now, Charlie, in the last race with Lily Pynchon on ITV, New Year's Eve and Cheltenham took out both the big races. What a pleasure these horses look to be as well. Of course, we've got T for free, very well named, and of course, Hector Javalex. Yeah, they're two progressive horses. T for free, he won this, he's, won, he's four from four of offences, and he won his first chase of a mark of, I think, 108, and he's now 138. Um, he's just a massive, a massive improvement. And we were, we did, to be fair, we did despair a bit last season that we couldn't win a hurdle with him. Uh, and we were trying our hardest, there's no doubt. But, I mean, look, since, since he's gone chasing, he's a different horse. One, three, eight, four from four. We've got to look for a big chase now. I might look at something like, whether I, whether I mention or not, the Sky Bet chase, whether we look at something like that um, at Doncaster at the end of the month. That could be an interesting treat for him. Or there's a novice handicap back at Newbury. He just likes those big galloping tracks, but he's a, been a great fun horse this season. And Hector Javelet, um, well... I mean, I thought he joined in the race half um, at, the, at the top of the hill at um, Cheltenham. I couldn't believe for a horse that was keen for the first half of the race that he flew up that hill so well. And again, he looks like now we've, now we've finally found the right trip for him, maybe I could say, that he's, um, that he's yeah, going the right way. 
he, uh, let's concentrate on the latter then. You took out the final race on TV on New Year's Day. And Lily Pinch had rode him the time before. There's a lot of buzz around Lily at the moment, isn't there? She's, she's another one of these female finds in the weighing room, I think. And it wasn't just on that. It was T for free as well. But let's concentrate on Hector Javelet. This is why you train for the Queen, of course. John Warren prefers your dialect to mine, obviously. And uh, you're going to surely look for a potential qualifier for him now. It's a tricky path to find, isn't it? But that's the race, right? Yeah, he has to look. He, look, the owner's a Cheltenham boy, um, and winning at Cheltenham meant a huge amount to him, and therefore he's not qualified yet. We've got to get him qualified. He's got to finish in the first four in a, ha in a per temps qualifier. We will probably aim for something like Huntingdon at the end of the month. Um, I think there's a race, there's a per temps qualifier on about the 27th of January. So, look, we need to finish in the first four there, and hopefully he's good enough to get into a per temps race. But if he does, the way he went around Cheltenham the other day, he's he could be a cracking shout. Yeah, she, uh, uh, you know, forgive me if I'm wrong, it looked like she went a little bit too soon the time before. This time she counted, waited, 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 had one to aim at and pounced, didn't she? He, he was pounding out the handicap there. We gave him a race to post-rating. We ran about 137, if I'm not mistaken. Do you know what he's gone up? I haven't asked yet, but I'm guessing it'll be probably 133, 134, somewhere, I say. I'd a pure guess. <laughs> That's tasty, isn't it? All of a sudden, the Irish thinking we finally worked out how to do handicapping again. And T for free. Now, he got a freebie up front, didn't he, at Newbury? What a sight he was. You could sort of tell five out. We, we cover all these races in this studio live on a Saturday, as you've probably seen. And both horses, Charlie, I'm not just saying this to blow smoke, while I am good at that, the punters were latching onto these for four times. They were all over these horses, and they were really, really well tipped up. People love a horse like T for free, a bit like Pete for Fee in 2012, where he just kept winning, rising the handicap. He got into a serious rhythm, didn't he? And again, proved himself on soft ground. Again, you said sky bet for him, but you've got to be looking at one of the big festivals, surely. Yeah, a one three eight now. Um... Yeah, look, I think you would. Yeah, you'd have to. You'd have to look at one of the big festivals. Definitely, you know, one of the three mile chase. Look, he's still in your novice. Um, but yeah, to be fair to Lily, she gave him. She as, as she said afterwards, I think she she knows the horse inside out, and she does. She got him into the most beautiful rhythm. Um, I thought he wasn't going to be able to make it that day. I thought I said to her, sit behind. There's loads of pace. Sit in behind the leaders and just take your time. Um, but there was no pace, and she just got him into a great rhythm. And it was great for her. Used her common sense. Um, you know, used his biggest asset, which is touching wood, as his jumping, um, and got him into a great rhythm. So yeah, he he has to go for a big pot somewhere. Whether it's the fest, whether it's at Cheltenham or not, I don't know, but he has to go for a big pot somewhere. All right, okay. So we'll keep tabs on him. And like I said, a lot of buzz about Lily, a lot of buzz about the yard at the moment. Great novices coming through, progressive handicappers. Now one runner this Saturday. Let's get down to business. We mentioned that you've won race before. Is the valuable veterans final grueling old test? Snow Leopardess comes out, and we love a story. We all know the great story about uh, the grey mare when she won the Beecher. Honestly, Charlie, here we go. Here we go again. Lots of smoke coming your way. Genuinely, one of my favourite races in the last ten years. Wow, that was amazing to watch. She went clear, got them all out of the comfort zone, and then just held on at the line. It's fair to say that probably took a lot out of her, didn't it, of course? She then, of course, she won a listed chase at Exeter. She's now coming back. You ran her in the National. We know the ground wasn't right for her there. She just got lost after a couple of fences. Everyone was all over her because she's that story National horse we like. Is it all about the road back from there? What about her chances tomorrow? I think she's got a great chance. Um... We've got rain forecast tomorrow, which I think is massive. Um, you you just you put a nail on the head. The day in the beach chase, she takes them out of their comfort zone in the middle half of the race. Um, that is that's the key to her really is taking them out of their comfort zone. And that's you know if it's very very soft ground tomorrow, which I'm hoping after five ten mils of rain tomorrow morning it will be. I'm hoping Aiden will be really positive at her and take them all out of their comfort zone because she just gallops and gallops and she loves it. And she's a, she's she's taken a long time to come to hand this year. Um, she didn't get her prep run for the Beecher Chase at Warwick because she slipped going into the first. Um, it meant she was probably just a bit short for the Beecher, but she ran a cracker. She was still mm. upside at the second last. And she's improved. And the ground hopefully will be... She likes wet days, and I'm hoping tomorrow's a really wet day. Yeah, it looks like it looks like there might be some heavy on the hurdles course, doesn't it? And uh, hence, around uh, additions not going there. So look, we wish you all the best with her. We know it's going to be run at a furious gallop. Prime Venture who takes his place again. Just one place ending in the betting with Bet Three Six Five. You're about a sixes shot. Everyone's on again. It's a, it, it's almost like a flip coin, isn't it? This season, last season she came into it almost too hot for the national. This time, steady, steady. Let's get our targets. We wish you well with her. She's going to love those railway fences, isn't she? 
Oh, you'd expect so. It's, you think Sandown's made for for a, for a horse like her. Um, like she's been such a big flagship horse for us for the last few years. She's carried us um, for a few through a few fallow years. So you know, look now we've got a few young horses coming through, and hopefully she can still she'll be wanting to hold her place in the yard pecking order. It's great that she's back in a good place. It's lovely to see that you get keep these horses going. We could keep going, Charlie. I've really, really enjoyed this. Thanks for chatting to me this morning from all the viewers here and everyone on the Racing Post and Water Shout. All the best for 2023. Star, thank you so much. There we go then. A very good talker and, and, and just an all-round lovely chap, Charlie. 2006 been training since. We've mentioned Pete the Feet, the greats there. But And you've got to mention because you've tipped one of his horses for the Supreme. Yeah, uh, rare addition. I liked him. I was, at, I was at, at Kempton on Boxing Day. I mean, that was a race that... Um, who won it? Altior. I remember Altior. That was the He's race the one, isn't he? Won. But there have been others. You know, and Altior, Altior's time then was, you know, in the, from in the last couple of... Uh, Flights of Hurdles was, you know, up there with Phil Wheaton mm. uh, at the time in the Christmas Hurdle. And again, in the last half mile, um, Rare Edition was matching Constitution Hill. Like, you know, was, wasn't quite as fast as him, but, you know, at the end of the day, it shows he's a really good horse. Mm. Two horses pulled well clear. He still got to the last going really well. Uh, and I was impressed with him. I think, you know, he's a decent horse. Now, I think he's probably the best two-mile hurdler in Britain uh, for novices. Uh, whether that is going to mean much when it comes to taking on the Irish, but obviously he's a miles bigger person than than he would be if he'd been trained by Nicky Henderson or so. And I'm, yeah, there's obviously reasons for that because you know these smaller yards they they struggle to get you know the, the firepower of, of the bigger ones. But he he looks a really really good horse. And in any other year he'd have gone straight for the Betfair hurdle, uh, but the throwing in the qualification of an extra run. And the fact is, they want to go to Cheltenham rather than go for the big handicap. Got a four now. Got they? a four course, now yeah. for that. So you know, I mean, they'd have to sling in another one and then go. First mention of that this season kills Nike. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. So I mean, they gave him a mark of 138. I mean, I think that'd be a gimme. But they would have to squeeze another run in and protect the mark at the same time. He's an uncomplicated horse. Charlie was slightly worried about his jumping over the two miles. All about chasing for him. But we've got one, haven't we? Right. The Brits, that is. Oh yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think he's right. good. So yeah, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, Faso Vega is going to be hard to beat, but by the same token, you can argue that he hasn't actually beaten that much. You know that now, Cheltenham I mean, is you know, here. Listen, People you know, when kills starts get, to go for a yeah, fab. Yeah, I get Twitter like you know <laughs> nutcases going on at me for, for ages about this, but the champion bumper, mm. in terms of winners and strike rate the following season, is the worst return of any champion bumper for the last 10 years. You getting your teeth stuck into yeah, this one yeah, I'm sure there are going to be a fair few horses who didn't run in a champion bumper who are better than the ones that Fasol Vega beat. And I just don't rate Ilete Tomp high enough to be massively excited about odds on yeah. for the Supreme Novices. Yeah. He may still win. Let's see what he does at Dublin and we'll go from there. But at a moment, odds on, there's got to be. There's got to oh. be value plays elsewhere, isn't there? All right, OK, that's the look back then. Let us know below what you think. Some big horses there. Great from Charlie's Yard, isn't it? Back in the big time. And lovely talk of Her Majesty there as well. OK, it's preview time. Let's go straight into it. The 150 at Sandown. Pat Cooney, take away the market. Yeah, favourite is Grey Diamond of Sam Thomas with another Sam aboard, Twiston Davis. And second fab, Carrageen Rock, round about 11 of four. Then three, Frero Bamboo. And then uh, sevens and eights bar. But uh, you look at the race, um, it's going to be plenty of pace on, I would have thought. I think Corrigine Rock likes to bowl along, as do Dreams of Home. So it's going to be a fast run race on presumably very testing ground. And I think... The race does set up well on that basis for Grey Diamond, who can just sit in behind and is quite reasonably weighted, I thought, of course and distance. When well, funny enough, the front three in the race, they've all been at Sandown twice. They've got one win and one second, so we can't knock them on that. Brero Bamboo, I thought was interesting. It was different tactics last time at Ascot. They made the running. That backfired, so that was a little bit disappointing. I, I just think the race sets up well for Grey Diamond. I am a Corrigan Rock fan, and I was looking there. Uh, uh, in terms of long-distance travellers. You know, from Lucinda's Russell's stable to Sandow Park is 453 miles. That's a long old way, isn't it? So, uh, um, yeah, good luck to them. That's a long journey home if you get beat. They're setting off now, run. aren't they? <laughs> in the camper van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so, Pat, which one are you going for? I'm going for Great Diamond because right. I could just see the race panning out better for him. All friends of the show, these, you know. So we've got Lucinda and Scoo going down with the dogs in the camper van. Probably setting off now, you're right. He's on a hat trick. Do you like him? 
I, yeah, I think he. I, I think it's. I think he's got a very good chance. He's got solid claims, isn't he? He's a, he's a horse going forwards. Uh, the other two are probably a little bit ex more exposed. Great Diamond's form is very good. Obviously, that third to Amarillo Sky and Fugitive, both subsequent winners. Yes. He was beaten a fair way. I think he's better going right-handed. I, yeah. I remember writing that in an analysis once. Yeah. I think he. I think he's just slightly better going right-handed. I think I this comes out of Ferro Bamboo, though. It's Ferro Bamboo ground. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's up to 10 mil forecast tomorrow uh, morning before racing. Now... The last two times he ran on genuinely b bad ground, uh, he beat fellow mud lover Eclair Dane at Lingfield with a pair of yeah. 20 lengths clear, and then he finished third in the Grand Annual despite getting almost left at the start. If you remember, he was tailed. So I don't think they'll, they'll I don't think they'll bother making the running because they don't need to make it a test if it's gonna be one. Yeah, uh, and so I, agree. I can see him sitting off, and you know his two again as as Pat said, they've all got a win in a second. Uh, there, um, he had a runaway win there, and his second was to Supreme Court Specialist um, Dolos, who dropped to a ridiculously good mark on the day, season. the Dolos day, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, and and is obviously much better than that. So, That's coming up, by the way. Uh, yeah, and that form worked really well as well because Gunsight yeah. Reach has, has come out and won since. since I've the, been following this chap. And they were going to run him in the December Gold Cup, if you remember, mm -hmm. where he would have run over the first time two mile four. He finds Ascot a bit sharp. And when they ran second time, he went from the front. And I think they were just trying to get the stamina right. This is perfect for him. And if there is any pace up front, he's going to be... If you watch back his ones, you know, at Sandler, those two runs, he's just getting going at the end when others are starting yeah. to wait. Yeah, he'll fly up here. He'll, be he'll fly up here. He'll be testing. He'll be yeah. testing ground and he'll love it. I think if they can just keep on to him at the second last then, I think we're going to win this with Ferrero Bamboo. Let's pop to Wing Canton then, uh, where we go for the 205, Pat Cooney. Yeah, favourite of these things at the moment is Vesta Lille of another Venetia Williams. Uh, it's always Saturday handicaps with the word soft in it, make them popular. I thought this was a bit of a ropey favourite for this one, really. It, got, it was favourite for this race last year and didn't run a race at all, really. It was very disappointing. And it only won narrowly last time out. I think there's others to consider. I think numbers one, two and three all disappointed a bit last time out. So you're left with four, five, and seven. Another crit actually won this race oh, last dog year. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> They're not numbers. <laughs> well, he loves his dog racing. Oh, Come no, on, Pat, we're awesome. Come on, get back in the game, man. <laughs> yeah, another crit won the race uh, a year ago. Off a slightly hard Blink was first. I could see him being popular in the market. I, I, an interesting run in turn to Civila. Jane Williams, she's amongst the winners at the moment, but lacks experience. I thought there was a lot to like about not available. I thought he was an honourable third to a very good horse of Venetia's at Newbury just a week ago. He's a couple of pounds lower in the weight since. So I can make not available a better handicap horse. I do think Desta Lille, yeah, can win, but a bit of a ropey favourite. Blew out in this a year ago. All right, OK. So there you go. He, he beat the, the great Bundora last time, of course. I must admit, this is tricky, isn't it? Whenever you see not available as third five and short in the betting, you think, mm, I might be able to find one. I looked at numbers one, two, five and seven. And, uh, <laughs> and I knocked them out as one of my trifecta. I thought this might be in turn Civola's race. I think we'll see a different horse. You've got Native Robin in the race, who's the core specialist, absolutely loves it. One way of running around there. He's going to tear off the veteran. Wouldn't totally rule him out, actually, if he gets a freebie. But I just think what we saw at Foss last, last time is not the horse we're going to see today. He's got some decent juvenile form. He was a bit keen over hurdles. That was his problem. And he's one of these horses that hopefully fences will set him down a little bit. I wasn't sure about the fav. I won't be going heavy, but Jane Williams, as Pat says, has had a good week, hasn't she? And uh, he'll do for me. Yeah, hasn't another quick has been laid out to win it again? Is the ground an issue? Yeah, it might be, but he won it, you know, he won it, he won it last year. He's a lovely horse, he's a strong travelling horse, isn't he? He's had two runs, which were both okay, nothing special about them, but he's now, now going to be fully fit, he's three pound lower than last year, beat the favourite in the race last year. Um, the Fav has run twice badly at Wincanton, strange really, given he's just come off two wins at Ludlow. Right Do you think he must have tight. had excuses then to go back though? Uh, yeah, possible, surely. possible. But, yeah, All I the think, races you could go to? Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know. possible. But I mean, you know, a two, two mile race on a right handed track, but you know, for some reason it's not. Mm. Uh, Wind counter might not be for him, but I just think another quick's been laid out for the race again is going to go close, surely. All right, OK, that is a tricky puzzle at Wing Canton. Good to see uh, the uh, West Country course shining on a Saturday television card. Pat, we go back to Sandown. Yeah, we do indeed for uh, the top berth, and this is a good race, this. And as things stand at the tough to pick what's going to be favourite. Maybe that's going to be weather-related, uh, but authorised speed and uh, Amoras 
head the market round about two to one each. And then you've got the Irish Raider, Arctic Brazil, with uh, Rachel Blackwell coming over 100 to 30 and 10 bar. I don't know. You look at the, the stats on this race and their favourites have got a good record in this race. They've won it for the six of the last eight years. But um, it's, it's a little bit different. I think on testing ground, I, I could see wisdom because there's eight runners. It, it makes sense to try and find one each way, really. And I respect the claims of the front ones. Uh, we have laid Lastro Boy since the the final decks came out of Evan Williams. Hard horse to get a proper handle on, but he's half in price, 20 to 10. I quite like number six, Nemian Lion, who's actually owned by one of our directors, Will Rosef. Colours will be very familiar to people. Happy Diva, Le Beau Bai. And this is a horse that Godolphin used to have. It was with Andre Farb, would you believe? And he did have bad legs, so soft ground isn't going to be a worry for him. He did win on his hurdle debut, got beat next time out, but that, that was an OK performance. And you don't see too many Kerry Lee horses going for grade one races. They, they, they only run them in races. They think they've got some sort of a chance. So I can see wisdom in Nemi in line at 16 to one. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's possible. You, you just I kind of smell in an upset in this race. But as I say, from an each way angle, eight runners, the dead eight, if we get eight on the day. I always like to look at something at a double figure price and the, he appeals as for the top two, I can't really split them. Authorised speed, he didn't jump that well last time out. I get that he's got the engine. Tamura's won OK at Haydock the day. It won the first race, so I was there that day. That was testing ground. The Irish horse, maybe he wants better ground. So I'm just ticking them off one by one, thinking, mm, not really. And I'm left with our uh, Will Rose, our director's horse, each way. Well, Will's watching this, and that's ensured Pat's in the job for another 12 months, that's for sure. Um, yeah, he's an interesting horse, anyway. When, when he won a minute over, Kerry said, well, got one here, haven't we? But he's obviously had his problems, he needs soft ground. Are you looking at it from an each way angle, or what yeah, about the top two? Yeah, I'm definitely two? looking at an each way angle. The top two, uh, I have a little concern about authorised speed jumping in a good race. Hmm. We'll find out. He made a right mess of the last or the second last last time at Sam. I think it was the last. He's very much uh, a work in Sam progress. Yeah, this he's, he's obviously he's obviously he's obviously very decent horse. He can be keen. I think he's the quickest horse uh, in the race. I'm not sure. Tomorrow's has looked pretty good, hasn't he? But he, you, you've got to remember that the horse who beat him in the bumper was in the field. That's Lastro Boy. And a horse that would have beaten him in the bumper at Wincanton is blow your wad had he not veered across the track. Yeah, I know because yeah. I covered that race. Yeah, so I don't think there's a superstar in the race. And when I look mm. at it, Pat's going on about Nemean Lion, right? You know, a lot of these have got BHA ratings. And the Mian Line's 1 3 1. All the rest is 1 3 2. Tomorrow's is 1 3 yeah. 4. And the Mian Line is six, seven <laughs> times the price of them. Now, that that went however was very good. The second next time out, you've got to remember that the horse that beat he was given £5. The horse that beat him, Hullen, Hullen back, had been second in the Grade 2 bumper at Aintree's Grand National meeting. So it's a good horse uh, and, and very well regarded. And I just don't see anything in his form to make him the price he is. And Pat touched on Kerry Lee's, uh, you know, not seeing her geese as swans. Well, it's absolutely right. She knows the worth of yeah. her horses. I had a look. She has run only 12 horses in races, in non-handicaps with the Tolworth value or higher. Uh, two winners, three seconds, a third, plus two high-priced fourths uh, in big grade ones. That's a good good record for a small yard. Mm. Right? She knows exactly the worth of her horses and she thinks she's good enough. You've got to remember, he was second in a group two uh, over one mile seven furlong for Andre Farb uh, in France on heavy ground, two places ahead of Max Vega, who's like 810 or whatever. So he's a classy, classy animal. If I uh, tip this as well, that's what I shall, shall signed off for life, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> Six in, well, I, I, I backed him earlier in the week. Just, you Did know, you? He was, yeah, he was, well, the ground's going to be perfect you know, for him. The ground's going to be perfect for him if he's good enough, he, you know, he, He'll, he'll he'll win, but he's got to, he'll, he'll go close. I think. I think he'll run a big race because, like I said, I, I trust Kerry Lee and know the worth of her horses. Let's talk about Arctic Brazil coming over one run. Um, experience slumped something of a worry, but these are owners that have had some good horses. El Capitaria, etc. Now beat Mercury, of course, who's a Richie horse. What do we know about that form? Because he must have been uh, fancy. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that Mercury. I'm not sure that Mercury is, a, is a, not going to cut the mustard. I don't think he is. I mean, I think you know you've got. A, You've got to respect Henry de Bromhead who's coming over here um, for the toll with Hurdle. Do you remember when he came over on the flat that? and won it with Lismore? Yeah, like, exactly, Henry exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, I thought he that says was, in his comments, it's a great track, Sam. I, I bet you love it, Henry. I thought that, horse, that, that flat horse that won had absolutely no chance, but I was there that the day and so was awesome, he. Really. And I thought, <laughs> hang on a minute, what's he doing here for this Mickey Mouse race? I remember Rob Bay was like, we've seen it, yeah. I had a couple of quid on it just for the sake of it. But no, you've got to respect him for coming over. I think 
he probably needs to find a bit more, but he's obviously yeah. young enough to do so. All right, OK. Uh, for me, I will be giving authorised speed a chance. Uh, I thought he was going to be too keen in his elder ways. He'd be looking look at that Lingfield form where they tried desperately to hold him. They had to let him go. He clattered a few hurdles. The second over further came out and won. They pulled miles clear. And I know that the Henderson horse immortal is thought to be a right old horse in the making. So if you view that horse favourably, it was a two-horse race last time. Of course, this was always going to be a hard act to follow after last year, but that was the race that Constitution had won as well. Of the market leaders, I like him. And I will have a little bit on blow your wad as well he's a talented horse that one and just at a massive price as well that is grade one action the race that we've all been looking forward to from a preview point though comes up next pat and this signs us off it's our old favorites yeah it's the veterans chase and uh, i think there's a big feel we're first five places on this race others may even be even more places but all the familiar names i put every single one of these horses in my place box once or more during their career and as things stand at the moment the top weight rams the ta of david pike is favorite but he has got 12 stone to be lugging around at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon at Sandown. That may just be a few pound too many for him. Next in the market is Prime Venture, who won this race a year ago off the same handicap mark. You can imagine he's been mapped out for this race, of course. Uh, Adam Wedge back aboard that, so I'd expect an improved run. Snow Leopardess, miserable form figures, PP8. But we all know she's quite a dangerous mare, this one, if she bowls along and gets a freebie up front. So it's hard, you know, you can you can pick a, a good few horses here and still be nowhere near the mark. Uh, number 15, keeping with the numbers, Kustar Sivilla. Surely this is the best handicapped horse in the race. I remember back in this upper marker, 150. Admittedly, he got beat. He's now off a 127. You have to be a bit lenient with the comeback run, but it is uh, Venetia Williams, Charlie Deutsch aboard. I don't know, this is a real head-scratcher for me. I, I suppose the sensible option is Prime Venture off the same mark as he won a year ago. But great to have them all aboard and uh, be a fun race to watch. Oh, it's going to be a fun race to watch. And uh, for the last couple of years, one thing you know I, I know about you, you love your veterans. And you were one of the first people to say this is a great series. Have you stuck with it? I mean, there's a little bit of time since I spoke to you about it. I these always guys. love watching the veteran races. Yeah, I, you know, you get to know horses over time, don't you? And obviously, with the three mile staying chasers coming back again and running again and again and again, there are some right old favourites in there. Not to mention Kustar Sevilla that, that Pat mentioned. Give him done me a right favourite to Cheltenham Festival. Oh, so yeah. Lizzie Kelly, absolutely, yeah. Uh, he was on a roll exactly. that year, though, wasn't he? No, he was massively on a roll now, and, you know, and he's, you know, I was going to say he's ancient, but they're all ancient, really, aren't they now? And the thing is, you know, he is very, very, very well handicapped with his old form. His comeback one was, well, he just didn't show anything, really. Uh, but he's been backed, and it's yeah, yeah. Williams, and uh, and you can certain and you can certainly see it. But I mean, I you know I prefer horses with better recent form, mm. and you know Slow Leopardess might have had two quiet runs this season, but the better recent form, you know, she's she only two grand higher. She's only two grand higher than when winning the beach a year ago. Now, first time out this season, she slipped into the fence at the very first in the qualifying. Yeah, race Charlie says that, yeah, right, and pulled pulled up straight away. So she almost certainly needed it then at Aintree. That was the Ramsey's race, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the Ramsey's race. Now, Ramsey's looked really, really good there. He'd had a Mustard. wind up. He'd come, he'd come back, but have a look at his form right-handed. He precious, has run at Sandown. Precious little of it. He was beaten by Prime Venture in a hurdle. Yeah. So yeah, but, no, you know, fences. Chase is no yeah, fences. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, his, his chase form is not brilliant right-handed. He hasn't had many goes at it. Uh, so that would worry me a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I backed two horses. I backed Snow Leopardess, who I think, you know, it, it, she'd be a real sight down the back if she, oh, gets, man. If she gets going. And you have to assume... She's one of the most sure-footed jumpers about. They're going to go hammer and tongs as usual in this race. Because Prime Venture last year was a million turning in, wasn't they? Well, you, remember? you know, well, Valadon just went off like a bat out of hell. <laughs> and Lily's on one here, of and, course. And, yeah, uh, and he, you know, Prime Venture actually won a race very easily in the end, though. Right, you know, and you've got to remember he's on a similar mark now. There's only been he's, one plan this there's year. Only been one, there's, yeah. There's only been one plan. He's back. Oh, I, I can't saying he I should be back him now. Actually. I wouldn't back him now because he's, you know, he's, he's halved in price this month. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I, I, you can see why. Who's the other one that you're backing? I've backed. No, I, I said I have backed. I've backed two. I've backed Prime Venture yeah. and I've backed Oh, he's backed you're because. with him already. I wouldn't back Prime Venture right. at the price he is now. I think Catch up, Dave Orton, sure enough. There's 18 runners in there. Bally Andy's got some great form. And now, some decent, has he been you know, overlooked? He could have been, couldn't he? You know, oh, I, I mean, think he has. He loves bottomless ground. He, again, like Ramsey's, he's got form at Sandown, but it is in... Novice Hurdle Company. Will he jump? That's my thing with him. 2016, wasn't it? He's never been the most sure-footed. He, around <laughs> Cheltenham, 
I gave him a chance because I wasn't sure that was in the Magic Dancer race, wasn't mm. it, over 2-4. Yeah. He yeah. needs further, he needs softer ground. He was supposed yeah. to go to Sandown the week before he got called off to get qualified for this. Everything looks right for a good run from him. Yeah, if he if he can keep if he can keep his jumping together, I'd, I'd give him a serious shot. I thought he'd be shorter in the market. What price, Bally Andy, with you, Pat, at the moment? He's double figures, isn't he? Yeah, he's round about twelve to one. Yeah, definitely one that you'd uh, you'd have to draw a ring round and put him in the uh, in your thought process. Ooh, twelve to one then, Bally Andy. I've got him on top, and I'll have the leopardess like kills to pounce at some point as well. Right, we've got one more race to come from Sandown, Pat. It's a handicap hurdle, and my looks open. Yes, absolutely. Uh, currently, has been Jello, his favourite uh, for Nietzsche Williams. Looked pretty impressive when he won first time out, but then managed to get beat a big odds on next time out. So, still a horse very much of interest. Also up there in the market, slightly squeeze of Harry Fry. A nine-year-old, a likely race nine-year-old, who won OK last time. ICO, Paul Nichols, we all had um, triumph hurdle possibility for him when he whizzed out, whizzed round first time. Hampton on his hurling debut, but he's not run for 315 days. So my eyes drawn number 10 in the air. Gary Moore and Jamie Moore ride in. Uh, stable, of course, got great guns. Um, and he's an interesting horse. Since he's off a mark of 120. But Gary Moore, not a, not a man who uh, overrate his horses. Ran this horse in the grade one at Aintree. Admittedly, he was well beaten by Night Salute. But um, there he is. He's on a perch of 120. When I would imagine if he had to stay out at Aintree, the connection store, he would have had some sort of a chance. Uh, there has been money for him in the air, so I'm going to honour him. He's only got 10-6. That quite, could be quite interesting by a half past the afternoon. The ground would be pretty testing by then. So um, I thought it was interesting before the money came for him. The money has came for him. So uh, I'm in the air tonight. One for the Phil Collins fan. Oh, there you are. All right. Let's hope he's on beat for you. Um... I'm going to need your help, like most of the punters out here, because this is a race I must admit I'll keep looking at. Ikio could be the interesting one, couldn't he? But first time out on that ground for Paul Nichols is going to be tough. Yeah, that'd, that'd be a worry for him. And he did sort of disappoint. He looked like he might be a bit of a star, and then turned out to be he was beating rubbish, and he, and he wasn't that good. It's a it's a mild <coughs> it's, suggestion, it's a, this, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, you know, the problem, the problem in this race, I looked at it, and I thought, you know, I could make a case for a lot, but I could also pick holes. I mean, you could pick holes in J-Lo. Looked, looked brilliant when he won, won first time first time out, yeah. but then... You know, tried to go for a quick one. Is he uh, favourite because it's just a Venetian well, thing? Right, yeah, yeah. He tried to go for a quick. He's favourite because of what he looked like there, and you can forgive him right. for for the quick return. But he's also eight pound higher than he was for the time he got beat. So, yeah. you know, a little bit worse. I thought I'm picking holes in this. I pick holes in this. Uh, I'm going to go for a massive flyer. Uh, it's not bad of outlaws. Come I on, back <laughs> Palladium. Ooh, is that pipes? Uh, ooh, no, no. It used to be Nicky Henderson. Poseidon's gone pipes, to. Too. Gone to Polly Gundry, hasn't run for 529 days. Santini? Uh, on the flat. Well, exactly, same ownership. Uh, she didn't do bad with Santini, did no, she? No, not in the, Fourth in the Grand National, so, you know, yeah. she can train. Now, this horse has obviously had a world of problems, but as a juvenile hurdler for Nicky Anderson, he, he won ran it, twice at Sandown, mm. he won by a wide margin both times on bottomless ground. Big Flick Ovoyu was pretty decent uh, the second time. Earned a rating of 137 then. Uh, done next to nothing since, had a big break after running what was a career best for him on the flat for Nicky Henderson. Uh, the last time he was seen, 529 days ago. He's only seven. He's got a mark of 126 now. She's returning him to the course, where he's unbeaten. Mm. And, Hang on. You know, he ain't a 50 to one shot if he's, if he's fit and there's nothing wrong with him. What price, Pat? What price the Palladium? He's currently at 50. They're throwing Nico de Poinville aboard. So, yeah, he's got... Um an interesting profile, hasn't he? Keep your eye on Band of Outlaws having a debut for Ben Haslam, that's for sure. But uh, never say Dave Orton doesn't mind the bandwagon and uh, we're all going to bring the curtain down with Palladium. Get on the 50s! OK, those of you that just scroll to the business end of this show, A, what are you doing? But B, prepare for some winners because it's nap time. Paul Keeley, I shall give you the floor. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to take a chance uh, and say Namian Lion in the toll of Hurdle. I just think he's wildly overpriced compared to the front two in the market, and he will love the ground. A nap in the Tollworth, but probably not the ones you were expecting out there, guys. OK, Pat Cooney? Uh, 158 at Newcastle. Interesting run at this. Gentleman Demai, trained by Rose Dobbin. Uh, closely related to Bristol Demai, so he's stepping up to three miles on soft ground would, uh, would be quite interesting. He's been a bit of an eye-catcher over two and a half miles, staying on strongly. 
lightly raced. He uh, won a bumper, then two good runs over hurdles, over shorter trips. Step up in trip. The breeding suggests he'll be good at it. And he's an unexposed horse. So, Gentleman Demai, 158 Newcastle. All right, then I'll bring it back down to Isha then. In the 150, I really like the chances of Ferro Bamboo. This is his race. The more pace up front, the better, please. All right, there are your three weekend pearlers. Well, sadly, that is all we've got time for the first show of 2023. We're off and running, Kills. It's all to play for. Great to have you back, man. Yeah, enjoyed it. I'll be going to stand out tomorrow. Of course you will. All day, if anyone's buying. <laughs> Our cameraman just ran out of the gallery, I think, at news of that. Pat, where are you this weekend? Uh, I've got a weekend off, actually. So feet up, uh, riding winners home from the armchair, all being well. Absolutely right. OK, let us know where you'll be watching this weekend. We'd love to hear that. Get your comments in below. Don't forget, of course, to gamble responsibly this weekend, guys. It's a sticky old ground out there, a tough time of year. Set your targets, that's for sure. No chasing. Don't forget to download the free racing post app. And again, I keep saying this every week, it's getting better and better. There's new, I'm just gonna whisper it quietly. There's a new website coming your way as well. There he is, look, Kills, all the Sizzlers. What time will I be able to get the Sizzlers, Kills? Sizzlers, see you at 6 p.m. tonight, if you're live, or a live member, yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll put you on the spot there, and you batted it back perfectly Thanks well. So. Uh, <laughs> a digital edition at 9 a.m. as well, but it's all there on the app. It's free to download, guys, you must do that. All right then, for myself, Dave Orton, again, like and subscribe, get those comments in below. What are your naps for this weekend? All the sports out there, enjoy it.